So time for the final game of the day here at the HSBC Asian 7 Series. A pool decider between Sri Lanka in the green and Japan in the red. Both teams pretty impressive against Kazakhstan. This could be a belter of a game to finish things off on day one. So not releasing the ball carrier. Sri Lanka are penalised. Oh, a rudimentary knock on there from Jamie Henry. Just took his eye off the ball as he surveyed the scene in front of him. Well, we saw some great play from Lemeki earlier today. The centre for Japan. Watch for him. He's playing at uh, Standoff. He certainly played very well. Here's Jamie Henry, the infringer on this occasion. Good scrum from Japan, putting them under a lot of pressure, but uh, Marija manages to get the ball wide to head up. And they get over the top of the ball nicely. It's a good battle for possession at the breakdown today. It's never been easy for a team to get possession. And it's Lottie Takiri who takes the ball away. And gives it to Lameki, the player I was telling you about. And a double play back to Lottie Tunkiri. And he goes over for the first try today. Good support play from Tukiri. Nice inside line. And Lameki, well, he's been a real magician both with ball in hand and slipping some lovely passes as well. So it'll be Jamie Henry taking the kicking duties for this game. The Mickey taking the conversions in the first game and Somiyama, who's not on the field now. So a good start to the game for Japan. The winner of this game will play Thailand. The loser will take on Malaysia, who have been playing out of their skins in a cup semi-final tomorrow lunchtime. Oh, poor play there from Miss Leonage. In fact, it's Chaturanga who missed the ball completely. Here's Jamie Henry, not getting far against the Sri Lankan defence. Knocked it on too, so turnover. Marija gets it wide. Herath, who's got some real express shoes on him, decides to go for a little kick, and that's a challenging one for the Japanese defence too. Marija follows up. It's a battle for the ball on the ground. Yeah, Japan playing it on the ground, which is, of course is illegal. So here's Sri Lanka's chance to get even. Okay, playing the penalty again. Looks like Disanayaka had almost knocked it on there in his attempt to play the ball quickly. It's out wide here to Viraratna, who's shown some real pace, the diminutive scrum half when he stationed himself out on the wing. Scored a great try against Kazakhstan, set a couple up. So Sri Lanka do indeed get one back against Japan but it's a very difficult conversion attempt here for either Viraratna or Marija Viraratna also has a very famous rugby playing brother Gayan who plays in the midfield for the Sri Lankan 15s team both of them and Marija from the Candy Club well, that's a beautiful kick. He split the post perfectly. Oh, oh. well done from Veraratna. Really turning into a fantastic sevens player. And actually you can see a lot of Ben Gollings in him. Of course, Gollings, the sevens legend, coaching Sri Lanka for the last six or seven months. Sadly fallen out with the Sri Lankan union at the moment. But I'm sure the time he had with them has uh, given them some good things under their belt. Also another foreign coach earlier this year in the 15 setup, Raven Duplessis. Also working on their strength and conditioning, their fitness. So it's a free kick for Japan. Suzuki, the veteran, takes it at halfway. Lottie Tukiri, who seems to have got physically bigger in the last couple of years. 
Nice run from him, and he's left plenty of space for Lemecki to work his magic. He won't need anybody. He's going to go all the way himself, Lemecki. What a wizard he is. He scored a hat-trick against Kazakhstan. That's his first try in this match. So that's four for the tournament. Getting within touch of Tom McQueen, who's got five from Hong Kong. So good play off a free kick at halfway from the Japanese team. That one's gone wide, so 12 points to 7. We start from Lemeki. Gets it nice and high. To Zawa, who's come on the field, who gets under it nicely. So Japan did regain possession, but they've just knocked it on, so... Sri Lanka will get the scrum. Interesting to see Chaturanga, who normally plays in the backs, playing in the forwards for this game. They do look a little light on experience in the forward pack, Sri Lanka. Oh dear, so Lothian's been very strict on these uh, scrum put-ins. Kirita Lameki. They really have been partners in crime, these two. Again, combination, quick handoff. And look at the numbers streaming down the left flank, Suzuki. So only five metres out now, Japan, trying to recycle it. Sri Lankan player gets in the way, slows things down. Now they're only a metre away. Suzuki marshalling his troops. Lameki again, he'll fancy his chances here off his right foot. Suzuki backing up nicely to Takeri. Takeri, second try of the game. And they really are weaving some magic, Tunkiri and Lameki. Well, he's uh, almost a the senior player in the Japan squad now. Japan have been sucked of all their experience in the last few months. No Sakai, no Kuazuru, no Narita, no Latoya. All been uh, claimed by their clubs for the top league as halftime whistle blows. So the halftime whistle blows and the score is 19 points to 7 at halftime. Lovely evening here in Kuala Lumpur for the first leg of the HSBC Asian 7 Series. Four legs this year. KL, Bang Sien, which is very close to Bangkok, Mumbai, and the final leg in Singapore in the second weekend of November. So Japan in control of this game over Sri Lanka, 19 points to 7. This Lameki has really been a revelation so far for Japan. Actually, they're all a load of links to uh, Ben Gollings, of course, the coach of Sri Lanka for a while, and Lameki playing his club rugby at uh, Sunnybank in Brisbane for a while, which is a club that Ben Gollings played for as well. There's Herat, he's a very important cog in the Sri Lankan wheel. They want to look for him with a bit of space in this game. I reckon he might have the measure of Saito, the Japanese flyer. If they can get the ball to him with some space and get him at top gear, it could be dangerous. But uh, very big scrum from Japan, putting oodles of pressure 
on them and they've turned the ball over. So a chance here for Japan to open the scoring in the second half. Jamie Henry striding away, some goose steps and commits two defenders. No runner though. In fact, there was a runner in the form of Lameki who stationed himself perfectly for the little offload. So there it is, Lameki is his fifth try of the tournament. Draws level with Tom McQueen from Hong Kong as the top scorer. In fact, will be the top scorer because he's got two conversions as well. That was a good run from Jamie Henry. Just dodging back and forth, making the Sri Lankan defenders unsure. That one's come off the post. Right in front. Some substitutes for Sri Lanka. See uh, Mututantri coming on. Not 10 metres, so we'll have a free kick back at halfway. Just wish they'd give the ball to Herath. In fact, he's found himself in midfield. He'll take this one himself. Yeah, there's no use having your fastest man in the team taking the tap. I finally realised that. And this is a good run. And he's put the ball on to Roshan Veraratna again. He shows some good pace. The little man doing really well there. This second try of the game. He's got all the points for Sri Lanka so far. So Marija takes this conversion. Leonage, do you take the kick off? Again, the kickoff team winning possession but just knocking the ball on, putting a lot of pressure on the team taking the ball. It's become a real positive move, both in the sevens game and now we see 15s teams pursuing it as well in an effort to get the ball back straight from scoring. Well, if Sri Lanka can get a quick try here, it'll be all on the last couple of minutes. Here's Saito, who's barely had a run today, let alone in this game. But uh, does well to power his way forward. And again, the scrum half gets uh, defenders on him, but they're offside this time. Trying to slow the ball down too. So 10 more metres marched up by referee Toby Lothian from Hong Kong. It's Henry who takes the ball quickly. Lameki to Lofi Takiri. Good defence there from Sri Lanka. But nice clean ball for Japan. And they've got some numbers out here too. Starting with Suzuki who weaves his way forward. Again, draws two or three defenders. So there should be numbers out wide. But just so much pressure on the ball carrier. Tunkiri goes in and mongrels his way up a metre or two. Suzuki this time gets it to Lameki. In fact, it's uh, it's Ubukatu's on the field now. The forward pass. Well, Saito's really not been in the game today. It's quite odd. He's got all the pace in the world, but he just doesn't seem to find himself in the right place often enough. Not doing the right work off the ball. I'm sure he's doing loads of work off the ball, but just not getting himself into a position where his inside runners can reach him. So this time Sri Lanka get it through Shamil. He's gone to scrum half. I'll get a free kick here. Shamil takes it quickly. Please give it to Herath. He's got space. Again, doesn't find him till last minute. And the gap's closed down. 
And some bungling on the ball there, and Leonardo gives up, decides to put it into touch. And there's substitutes to be made. Just a few minutes on the clock left. It's Disaniaka who's coming off. Looks like uh, might be uh, Ratwate who's coming on. Patharawa, in fact. So Japan to throw into this line out to uh, Nakashima. And it goes to Tunkiri Lemeki. Again, here's Saito on the flank, who's not looked at by Henry. Henry goes on one of those runs where he steps and strides his way, creating uncertainty for the defence. Here's another good run from Ozawa too. Good backing up from the Japanese as they put real pressure on the Sri Lankan line. Suzuki gets it out to Tukiri. The cover defence is coming across. Here's Saito. Can he use his pace this time? Gets around the outside of Hera. Can't slide to the line. They're just millimetres away. As Sri Lanka come away with the ball, they've come in at an angle, though. So Japan will get a chance to tap and run through to Kiri, who goes over for a hat trick. One more time for Japan. Good work from Lottie to Kiri. Knew the penalty had been awarded centimetres from the line, but stationed himself five metres back. Took the quick tap and over he went. He's got a hat trick in this game to put the icing on the cake for Japan. Scores up to 29-14. And this could be the last play of the game with Lemeki lining up a conversion. So this has been a very strong performance from Japan. One of their most experienced outfits, but uh, done very well. They've got a real fulcrum in centre field. Uh, Takiri, Lemeki, and Suzuki, experienced players. He's put that one wide. And that will be the end of the game. Japan have wrapped up Pool D. 29 points to 14 victory over Sri Lanka. So that will see them through to play Thailand tomorrow in the Cup quarterfinals. And uh, Sri Lanka will go on to play Malaysia. So... An interesting matchup for them. All is not lost for Sri Lanka as well. So, good performance. In the end of the day's play, we've had 12 games, some entertaining rugby. So join us again at 12.30 tomorrow on YouTube. We'll be streaming live again for the Cup quarterfinals. Final score, 29 points to 14 to Japan. Stick with us because we're looking for an interview with the captain of Japan. For Pool D, rank number one. Trying to get Lottie Tunkiri now. And the third place, Singapore. So let's Pool just go D, through the results for rank you. Rank number one, Malaysia. Hong Kong Pool top with South Pool A. Africa. Thailand then Singapore. A surprise in Pool B, Malaysia finishing top. South then Korea, Korea and China. The Philippines taking out Pool China. C just ahead of for Chinese Pool Taipei. C. U. AE, ranked at the bottom there of Pool C. Rank Japan, two, top of Pool D. Taipei Sri Lanka, then Kazakhstan. UAE. And Pool D, ranked number one, so just bear with Japan, us, Lottie Tunkiri is making his way Lanka, over to the other side of the field. Lanka. As we said, Hong Kong will play Chinese Taipei, Cup quarterfinals, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Japan against Thailand, we'll Philippines and Korea, some good matchups. So let's cross over now to Sean Moore. He's uh, sideline with Lottie Tukiri, the Japanese captain. Okay, Japan captain uh, Lottie Tukiri. Lottie, two wins from two today. Uh, you have a new look side. How do you feel the guys came together today? Uh, it went well today. Uh, especially what you just said, it's a very young team. Since you just prepared only for a week and a half. Still, uh, still more uh, things to improve on uh, on our tech and our defense. But at the moment today, uh, the way it's to really to really develop from uh, from what I thought it was going to be a tough game for us. But it went well today. And a hat trick in the uh, last game. You must be happy. Yeah, it was uh, come easy, especially during Asia Sevens. 
hat trick, but not in a <laughs> not in a uh, World uh, Series. But it uh, feels good. Feels good to be back on uh, sevens. Yeah, thank you, Lenny. Have a good night. Cheers. So we hope you've enjoyed today's coverage from the Petaling Jaya Stadium here in Kuala Lumpur. What a great day's play we've had. So join us tomorrow. We'll be streaming live on YouTube. But uh, for now, it's uh, Trimakasi and a good evening from Malaysia here at the HSBC Asian 7 Series. Goodbye. Hari kedua dalam perjalanan kami Malaysia Seven yang akan bermula jam 11 pagi besok bermula dengan perlawanan separuh akhir kategori bawah 11 tahun dan bawah 14 tahun. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Corporation, and we'll see you back tomorrow.